Today we have the Rokat Vulcan TKL Pro with the Titan optical switches made entirely for gaming. Feels really great, but is it really worth the $160 price tag that it launched at on October 30th? We'll see. Hey guys, this is Betty from Switch and Click, and today we have a really interesting product for you guys. This is the, the Rokat Vulcan TKL Pro. I've been testing it for a few days now, and despite it looking super weird, I've actually really enjoyed the way that it feels and the way that it sounds as well. So on to the review, shall we? Oh, and it's got a volume knob. It's a TKL and it's got a volume knob. That's pretty cool. So what's in the box? The box itself looks really vibrant, very colorful, shows off a lot of the features of the board. And inside the box, we have a pretty bland black braided USB-C cable. It's got its own Velcro tie, so some cable management there. We also have a quick installation guide, and in this is the specs that's pretty much on the case as well as what the secondary functions are and that's about it not much in there and then of course we have the board itself as well and that's it there's nothing else there's no that's all that comes in the box but anyways the box is not the main attraction obviously it's the board all right so the build quality of the board is really sturdy it is a super sturdy board, some creaking when you try and flex it. And that's because the bottom of the case is made entirely of plastic. The top is made of a brushed aluminum black metal here, and it looks really nice. It reminds me a lot of the Corsair boards or even the HyperX boards, but it is super low profile here with the case on the back we see that you see a lot of screw holes and I don't see this with too many boards. Usually boards hide their screws behind the rubber feet or the kick up stands or something like that. It says 10 screws back here, keeping the board together. You have two kick up feet with one angle each and they're quite wide, they're quite horizontal. And this really keeps the board from slipping even with the feet that are up. Unlike a lot of boards with really skinny feet, like those, they don't slip when they're flat, but when you raise it, they'll start slipping a little bit. Alongside that, there are five really large rubber feet here, so no sliding at all. It's really, really stuck on your desk. Downside is that the USB-C port, although it is detachable, which is a bonus, is straight in the middle. So when you're putting some fancy cables, let's say you have like, this fancy custom coiled cable here, you put it in the middle. It doesn't look as good when it's coming off to the side like this. So we also have a specially made, just a regular straight USB-C cable and this plugs in beautifully. Looks really good. You could use the original cables that it comes with. It has a Rokat brand on it, but personally, I really like my custom cables. And if you are looking for some, then Juju Cables is a great place to get them. He's a friend of mine from Australia. Custom makes these himself and they're really high quality. Anyways, moving on. On the side here, you can see that it's like a super low profile case. We have the aluminum plate and then that itself is fully enveloped by this plastic bezel and then the plastic case on the bottom too. But it looks clean and it's pretty sturdy. So one thing you can see right away is this super floating keycap style design. It is enormous. You can pretty much see the entire switch here. And this could be a benefit to some, it could be a disadvantage to others. It really depends on who you are, whether you love your RGB or you don't, I'm not sure what my cat is doing right now because this has never happened before. The keyboard with its really low profile case barely has any angle to it when you just lay it flat on the desk. So I do find myself using the kickstands and this is rare, but with the kickstands, they feel a lot more comfortable to type with and to game with. 
and it's a much more natural wrist angle for me. All right, onto the front here, you have a volume knob on the very top right. It is slightly tactile, but there's no super satisfying click or feel to it or anything. It's pretty much an infinite scroll. There's no place that it stops any on either side. You have the minus and plus inscription on the board itself. And then this tiny little button here next to it, that is a dedicated mute button or unmute button down. The show must go on. She is really desiring some attention right now. This is really strange, but dedicated mute button here. And we have our function row up top, our nav keys, our arrow cluster. It is a 10 keyless layout. It's pretty compact. They do offer a version with the number pad, but I'm not a big number pad user. So don't expect me to say anything on that. On the plate here above the arrow keys, you see Rocat Vulcan for the branding and it looks good. The overall plate, the overall keyboard looks really good. We will continue on to the keycaps. The keycaps are extremely unique because this keyboard is such a low profile keyboard with regular profile switches. The keycaps are super thin. They barely add any height at all to the board. If you're an RGB person, like the lights from this will really impress you. You see all the lights through the switch. You see the lights through the keycaps. It looks very good. We'll go on to the switches after this, but the keycaps themselves are ABS double shot plastic. So that means the legends themselves will never wear out. However, the keycaps are gonna develop some shine over time. Now I've written several articles with these keycaps and so far nothing. However, they are really slippery and smooth to begin with. I think this material is going to develop some kind of nasty feeling eventually. So the caps look good. They, the backspace, enter, shift, caps lock tab, they are symbols, not letters. And that can look pretty good. Initially, when I looked at the board and started typing on it, I was like, oh, why are the keycaps so far away from each other? But after typing on it, it just feels sort of normal. And the appearance may look like they're more spaced apart, but in actuality, they're the same distance as any other keyboard that you probably use. So no issues there. You have secondary legends for other media keys on the function row here. You got some RGB editing stuff on the arrow keys. You have different functions. There's game mode. You can switch the location of Windows and FN. It really just depends on what you need from this board. There is software, it's called Rocat Swarm, and it lets you do sort of fun things like change the RGB, remap the keys. It also lets you do some kind of like auditory feedback when you type. So you can tell it to do a clicky noise. So if you have your headphones on and you wanna know that your keyboard actuated, maybe that's something useful that you could do. So if you like are on WASD and you press W, it'll make either a click sound or there's different options for light beams, sci-fi noises, lasers, all kinds of fun stuff. Personally, I think it is distracting and annoying, so I'll turn it off. It also has the option to like program an entire different board into game mode. So with game mode, you can remap all the keys and that is a different setup than your regular mode. So essentially there's like two profiles here that you can mess with. So that's really cool. All right, I'm getting distracted. Back to the keycaps. They are flat. They're slightly concave. As far as profiles go, it is a uniform profile and it's pretty much each row is the same except for the angle of the board, which adds a little bit of incline from row to row. Initially, it was hard to type with. I had some typos here and there. For gaming though, it's a really comfortable board and it sounds and feels fantastic. So the legends are super clean. Nothing is separated or cheap feeling at all. I can see here on my tab key, there seems to be a little bit of shine developing 
there already and on my space key as well. So it is gonna get a little bit dirty. You can always alcohol wipe your keyboard or something and try and keep that away. But don't worry because the switches actually have cross shaped stems despite having such weird looking keycaps. So you can change out these keycaps to whatever you want. I put on some cherry keycaps just to see if they would like fit and they do. However, because of the floating keycap design, it just looks a little funky. The option is there. You can absolutely change out these keycaps. It's a TKL board, it's standard. The bottom row is standard. Everything is pretty normal. Despite it not looking standard, it is. So the keycaps are low profile, the case is low profile, but the switches are not onto the switches. So these are new, they are created by Rocat on the switches. You can even see Rocat inscribed on each plastic housing. They are the Titan optical switches and like many optical switches, their lifespan is 100 million key presses. And that is a ton of key presses. They are linear switches, there's no bump or click. The sounds that you hear are the switches bottoming out and that does create a nice low pitched sound compared to switches like Gateron Reds. They have a 1.4 millimeter actuation distance and that is 0.6 millimeters less than Cherry MX Red switches. So these are gonna be a little bit faster. They're also really lightweight, but the weight of the switch isn't specified by Rocat. I'm going to assume it's about 45 grams. At least it feels like that. The, they are super, super, super smooth. They don't need to be lubed at all. One problem is that they do have some spring ping, especially if you like start jamming on them really quickly or button mashing like in a game or something. But for just casual typing, it is wonderful. Another great thing about optical switches is that they have less latency and they don't have as many double key press problems as mechanical switches can have over time. So really good things here. The switch housing is clear with a red stem. So the RGB does shine through the clear housing very brightly. If you look at your keyboard from a certain angle, you'll see the lights shine through the hole. But if you're just looking at it from like top down, then you won't see that, but you'll see it through the keycaps. So great switches, sounds great. Typing test is gonna be at the end. Check the timestamps down below if you wanna jump there right now. Next, we're gonna talk about the stabilizers. And these stabilizers are Rocat's own proprietary stabilizers. They have a patent pending on them, but they appear to be under the plate and they sort of just stick there and they, they connect to the keycaps. So they're super stable. They sound really amazing. I'm actually really impressed by them. I'm just gonna do a quick preview here for you guys if you're interested. So it sounds really good. No additional noises other than that spring ping. If you hear that at all, maybe my ears are just too close to the board itself, but that is the primary noise that I'm hearing. The board is a thousand hertz pulling rate and that's comparable to many other mechanical keyboards. It might not be as fast as the Corsair K100 with their up to 4,000 hertz pulling rate, but combined with the optical switches and that pulling rate, it's gonna perform pretty well. But obviously I'm not that kind of gamer. I play things like Stardew Valley and RuneScape. OS RS, not RS3, keep that in mind. So, you know, a really high performance board like this is not something that I need to be using, but if you're playing competitive games like Fortnite or Call of Duty, something like this could totally help you out if you're using a board that is mechanical and has a slow polling rate. Okay, RGB patterns, there are some preset patterns on the board already. The software also has patterns and it'll let you set up your RGB as you want. But we'll go over what's preset already on the board if you end up not downloading the software. All right, so to cycle through the RGB patterns, you're gonna press FN and either the left arrow or the right arrow. You can turn up and down brightness from the up arrow and the down arrow, and you can change the RGB off with FN and control. There are a bunch of brightness levels and the keyboard gets 
plenty bright. So what do I think of the Rokat Vulcan TKL Pro? I may not be a gamer, but I have a lot of experience with mechanical keyboards and optical keyboards. So for a board like this, it feels really sturdy. It's high quality, it looks good, and the switches are really awesome. They have a nice low pitch sound, so you can listen to that all day long. It's got really stable stabilizers with no rattle. The one thing that I really dislike about this board is probably the decision that they made to make the keycaps low profile. I would probably just put regular keycaps on this board, you know, advertise it as like a normal TKL with dedicated volume wheels that are like optimized for gaming and not try to market it as a low profile board because as you can see, it really isn't a low profile board. If we compare it next to a real low profile board, this thing is ginormously tall. Also for the price, this is quite expensive for what you are getting offered. It would be nice to see some PBT keycaps here that are not gonna develop that shine over time and the detachable cable is really nice, but I would like it to see either on the left or the right side, depending on who you are. And the knob, it's okay. It feels like an okay knob, maybe if it was made of aluminum or had some kind of really satisfying tactile and audible feedback, that would be awesome. But if you're looking for a nice optical keyboard to game with, this is a pretty good option. There's a few other options out there if you're interested in checking them out. That is the Razer Huntsman TE or the Mini. I've got reviews on that. The GK61 is a budget one. I'm getting a review on that coming soon. And then the Corsair 100, which obviously costs a lot more, but also has a lot more functionality too. So I wouldn't buy it, <laughs> but it's up to you. It's really smooth. It sounds really good. And if the keycaps were different, I would probably be say, saying something else. So I hope you guys liked the review. We're gonna jump into the sound test right now. Hope you guys enjoyed the review. If you haven't subscribed already and if you got any value out of this video, please press that subscribe button, that like button, comment down below what you think of this board and whether you think this is a low profile board or not. Because it's pretty big. Let me know what you think and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.